Grand Seiko from their mirror polishing and absolutely immaculate details have secured the position in the industry where you simply consider them as the benchmark for manufacturing and attention to detail. Although they've been gradually rising in their prices, yet the experience you get with them is simply yet to be seen in the watches even at two times their price. One factor is creating the impression where you are the benchmark for highest level of finish and workmanship. And second factor is to maintain the standard you have set. It takes years to create the impression and make an acceptance and it takes a whole life to maintain the standard and stay on top. So how's GS doing with the second factor? If you like this video or other videos I have produced, please support me by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. I'm not affiliated with any business or shop and what I share here is purely my opinion from buyer's perspective. I don't make videos to sell the watches. I make them because I love watches. I'll divide this video in three parts with first one being my general comments and details on this watch. Second being my findings after macro inspection of this particular piece and third one is my heads up to you before you buy this watch. If you are here only to hear what I'm cautioning you against, you can fast forward to part 3 of this video which is what you would want to know before buying this model to avoid the disappointment I'd been through once. Grand Seiko SVGE201 is one of the bigger sized offerings by GS and the watch presents a bigger 44mm case size. I've quoted before and I'll re-emphasize that the case size and numbers are many times deceiving and what really matters at the end of the day is how large or small the watch wears and how the overall proportions of the watch and the case make it look in terms of size and wear. This GS GMT however wears true to its size and being 44mm it does wear large. One very distinctive manufacturing feature of Grand Seiko is Zaratsu polishing which is truly as shiny, cleany and clear as mirror. The beauty of Zaratsu polish is that there is no distortion in the reflections of the object. This GMT comes with the same signature Zaratsu polish on the case and in the dial. On the case we have polished bevels and case sides which add to the overall shiny and blingy looks of the watch. Inside the dial we have our markers and dial hands that further showcase the same finest example of Saratsu polishing. The chamfered size of our markers sporting the polished surfaces is probably one design element I truly love and then the way they reflect the light at the flick of the wrist is simply sensational. The dial hands then further come with top surfaces that are very elegantly brushed and the brush lines show another example of fine watch making. The sides of the hands are also polished to complement the watch looks. Second very distinctive design element of this watch is the sapphire bezel where we have many steel and ceramic bezels out in the market. This GS with sapphire bezel truly opens up a new market and experience on the wrist. While it being sapphire does look fancy it is actually very shiny and reflective too and it makes the watch overall very loud and bold to the point that you will simply not buy this watch if you wanted an understated or a subtle watch. The bezel being sapphire also means it's fragile and prone to scratches if you hit it with force. The bezel however works well with the overall watch design and characteristics. The bezel comes fully loomed to the point that even though not all the AVO markers in the dial have loom in them, the bezel can easily allow you to even read the second or the GMT time. The loom is bright and beautiful and it's easily legible. The seconds hand is not loomed so you can't use this watch to time the seconds in the dark. The watch lug to lug is close to 51mm and due to larger case dimensions the watch does wear large. My wrist size is 6.5 inches and I think my wrist is close to borderline for this watch in terms of wear. If not then I will not suggest you to consider this watch if you have a wrist size smaller than 6 inches. There is no anti-reflective coating on the crystal externally and the reflections can be slightly distracting too. 
The watch comes with brushed bracelet with polished edges and overall Grand Seiko are leaving behind in the bracelet department. The bracelet has nothing special to feel about and brushing and feel is just ordinary. The clasp finish, feel and even the click sound of it when you secure it is less than impressive. And I don't think the clasp feel on this GS is any different than the basic entry level Seiko. There is no quick extension system in the bracelet so if your wrist swells quite a lot the bracelet adjustment can be very painful. The reason I call the bracelet adjustment as painful process is the size of the screws GS use in their watches. They are almost microscopic and extremely hard to be handled with hands. If you try, 60% chances are that you will lose them while handling or securing them. I've always looked at Grand Seiko with my macro lens with a lot of excitement and joy, believing that what I'll see will set the new reference for that perfect finish and polishing. I mounted my macro lens with the same excitement and energy this time too, but I was sadly disappointed. The painting on the dial for text is not quite on par with GS standards. The alphabets are not clear or crisp, edges are uneven and smudgy. The painting for even power indicator is simply bad and you can see the similar quality issues as the text. I have a feeling that this paint will come off sooner than you would think. The dial is textured and matte in the form, yet I could see imperfections and a bar protruding out and high spot in the dial. The high spot in the middle of nowhere clearly defines that this style wasn't properly inspected. Unfortunately, it's also not the only one, rather we have another similar mark in the dial. The GMT hand finish is fine, but the sides of the arrow again show similar voids within the paint. The bezel action of this GMT is not consistent. I like the bezel sound and the click on this GMT, which is crispier than Rolex GMT Master 2 but the bezel action during its normal rotation at the same speed and same force for rotation changes the sound of clicks multiple times. I'll play two sounds, one from this watch and other from Rolex GMT and I will let you gauge which one of these two audios changes the sound and feel of the click during the bezel rotation and that too multiple times. The click sound from the first watch wasn't consistent when you compare it with the clicks from second watch. The first watch was this Grand Seiko and unfortunately either something is not right with this bezel or the mechanism is just not good enough to produce consistent sound and feel. Now I'll tell you something that you must know before you are buying your Grand Seiko GMT and this appears to be a problem with their both high beat GMT and spring drive movements. And the problem is that the AVO hand does not align with the AVO marker when the minute hand is exactly at 12 o'clock to click the next AVO. These are the photos of my first GS GMT from two years ago. And you can see that when the minute hand is exactly at 12 o'clock, the AVO hand has already gone past the center of AVO marker. This irritated me even more when you look at six o'clock position and you can easily see that the hands are simply not aligned. And this follows on with almost every AVO marker and you can see that the AVO hand is just misaligned. I moved the hands around to conclude that the AVO hand was misaligned by four to five minutes and when the minute hand was at 11 o'clock position, the AVO hand was properly aligned. I thought it was the problem with that particular watch only and it was returned. But sadly, this watch reminded me the same event from two years ago. And even though this is now spring drive movement, as opposed to my last GMT, which was high beat, the problem persists. I've changed the hours to different position to confirm the same, 
and the hour hand remains misaligned for most of the hour markets. Again, the hour hand is misaligned by 4 to 5 minutes. I don't know how easy or hard fix it is, but I would think that aligning hour hand may misalign the GMT hand. I also don't know if the problem is with uneven spacing between the hour markers or just the overall placement of the dial or the clearances or movement tolerances, but the misalignment is there and it's not consistent across all the hour markers. There are these GS GMT watches out there that have the hands completely aligned, but then this problem with misaligned hands is also more frequent than you would think. This happened to me both times with GMT models and I'll say that it's likely that this issue is limited to GMT model references. So make sure before you buy yours that you spend some time to check that the hands are aligning unless misaligned hands don't matter to you. Grand Seiko SPGE201 has the characters, design, aesthetics and looks that set it apart from the competition and make it unique. The design elements like sapphire bezel, saratsu polishing and then the spring drive movement are the characters that you simply don't get in any other watches. It is a big watch and very shiny too, so you will only consider this watch if you really want a watch that can simply not go unnoticed. I was hoping to see the best in the business craftsmanship in this price and this particular piece, but I'm sadly disappointed with what I've seen and was expecting more from GS. They have set the standards so high up that we simply don't expect quality and manufacturing issues. So will I personally recommend this watch? Well, this watch has most of the elements you would expect from a regular watch in this price. It just doesn't have one thing, the GS quality.